हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फंडामेंटल डेफिनेशन एंड मेथड ऑफ डिस्पोजल ऑफ सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट आवर फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज द रिफ्यूज दैट इज द फंडामेंटल डेफिनेशन नाउ व्हाट इज रिफ्यूज ऑल द सॉलिड्स एंड सेमी सॉलिड वेस्ट ऑफ अ कम्युनिटी एक्सेप्ट ह्यूमन एक्सक्रीटा एंड सलेज इज नोन एज रिफ्यूज इट मींस दैट all the solids and semi solid waste of a particular community except the human solid waste that is excreta and sludge is known as refuse now what are the examples of refuse the examples of refuse are garbage ashes and rubbish now what is garbage garbage includes all parts of biodegradable organic waste obtained from kitchen hotels restaurant etc it means that garbage will include all the types of biodegradable organic waste obtained from the kitchens hotels restaurants etc now what are the examples of garbage vegetable peelings food articles fruit peelings are the examples of garbage now the density of garbage usually varies between 450 to 900 kg per meter cube that is the garbage now what is ashes ashes are the incombustible waste product obtained from furnaces houses or industry when we burn the solid waste in the large incinerators or furnaces all the combustible material will evaporate or will goes out into the atmosphere and all the incombustible material will remain in the furnaces itself in the form of ashes now this ashes needs to be disposed by some other means okay now its density usually varies between 700 to 850 kg per meter cube now what is rubbish rubbish can include variety of materials which may either be combustible such as paper plastic textiles etc or incombustible such as broken glass metal etc so we can say that rubbish is a combination of both combustible as well as incombustible material now the density of rubbish usually varies between 50 to 400 kg per meter cube now we will discuss the disposal of refuse there are five methods of disposal of refuse first one is the sanitary landfilling next one is the incineration another one is bargaining it out into sea next one is the pulverization and the last one is composting which is the most important method of disposal of refuse now we will see each and every method in detail okay starting with the sanitary landfilling now what is sanitary landfilling and how can it work in this method the refuse is dumped and compacted in layer of about 0.5 meter thickness and the days work when the depth of filling becomes equals to 1.5 meter it is covered by good earth of about 15 cm thickness now the land on which the sanitary land filling is to be done is covered with clay barrier so that land pollution will not happen on that land okay now above that clay layer perforated pipe should be provided so that all the liquid from the refuse will enter into this perforated pipe and from this perforated pipe we will take that liquid and dispose it by some other means okay now suppose that this is the plan of the area where we need to dispose or where we need to fill the land by sanitary landfilling method okay now we divide this area into smaller units and this smaller units is known as cell now we had to fill this smaller units one by one now we will show here the cross section of each cell now what will happen firstly we will fill 0.5 meter thick refuse layer in this and compact it okay after which we again add 0.5 meter of refuse and again compact it and we will continue this till the height of 1.5 meter is not reached at the end of the day's work okay now when the height of 1.5 meter is reached we will cover this refuse by a 15 cm thick layer of soil okay now we will left this layer or we will left that cell for the 7 days for its decomposition process now in the next day we will fill next cell similarly we will fill next cell in the next 7 days now after 7 days we will again fill this same cell again by 0.5 cm refuse then by 0.5 m refuse then 0.5 m refuse till 1.5 m height is not reached after which the process is same and repeated okay now during this 7 days insecticides like ddt cresol etc should be sprayed on it so as to prevent the breeding of mosquitoes and flies 
when the land is completely filled by refuse a final cover of about 0.6 meter of earth is laid and compacted at the top of the filled up land okay now when the high, when the area is completely filled by refuse we need to cover that refuse by 0.6 meter of earth okay now the land filling operation is essentially a biological method of waste treatment since the waste is stabilized under aerobic condition starting okay during the starting of this process the condition will be aerobic because oxygen is there now when the time goes then the oxygen deficiency is there now due to the deficiency of the oxygen what will happen an aerobic process will takes place in that sanitary land filling okay so we had right here the waste is stabilized under aerobic and anaerobic processes the refuse gets stabilized generally within the period of 2 to 12 months and settled down by 20 to 40 percent of its overall height it means that the complete land filling process is done or the decomposition process is completely done within a period of 2 to 12 months that is the sanitary land filling okay now the next method is the incineration method now in incineration we will burn all the combustible matter in the incinerators at a very high temperature and all the incombustible material will left out in the form of ashes which is to be disposed by some other methods okay now burning of refuse at high temperature in furnaces is known as incineration only combustible matter is burnt and the left out ashes and clinkers along with non recycled incombustible material may be as much as 10 to 25 percent which has to be disposed of by some other method we had already discussed it that only combustible matter will be burnt and all the incombustible matter will be remain in that incinerator as a ashes or in the other means such as clinkers etc now we had to dispose that ashes and clinker by some other means by sanitary land filling or by composting method clear now large size incinerators are called destructors the minimum temperature in the combustible chamber should be greater than 670 degrees celsius which is very high temperature so as to incinerate all organic matter and oxidize foul smelling gases why we kept this much high temperature to incinerate all the organic matter as well as oxidize foul smelling gases that will be the incineration process now the next process will be the barging it out into sea now in this method we will dispose all the refuse into the sea from a distance of 16 to 20 kilometer from the coastal areas and at that place the minimum depth of sea must be 30 meter or so otherwise we need to move to some more distance where the depth is greater than 30 meter we need to dispose that refuse to that sea water okay now throwing refuse into the sea at a reasonable distance from the coast that is 16 to 20 kilometer is known as barging it out into sea now the sea depth at the disposal point should not be less than 30 meter or so otherwise all the waste will come with the waves on the coast only okay that's why we need to dispose that refuse or that waste where the sea depth is greater than 30 meter that is the barging it out into sea clear now the next method is pulverization the refuse is pulverized in grinding machines so as to reduce its volume and to change its physical character why we generally do the pulverization to reduce the volume of the refuse as well as to change its physical character now the grounded or pulverized refuse becomes practically odorless and unattractive to the insect it has to be further disposed of by filling in trenches or digested in closed digester it means that after the pulverization process we need to treat that refuse by some other means such as by sanitary land filling or by closed digesters we need to treat that refuse okay now that is the pulverization method now we will move to the next important topic that is the composting method of disposal now that is the one of the most important method of disposal of municipal solid waste or the solid waste clear now we had bifurcated the composting method into two part that is the indoor method of composting and the bangalore method of composting now we will see one by one each and every method in detail okay starting with the indoor method of composting now in indoor method of composting we will fill the trench by the alternative layers of refuse 
and night soil we will kept in one layer refuse and in another layer the night soil that is the human waste okay human excreta or human solid waste clear now in another layer refuse will be there and above that night soil will be there similarly another layer refuse will be there and night soil will be there now after filling the complete trench of height of 1.5 meter now what we will do we will just left this mass as it is and by periodically turning that mass for 2 to 3 months we will keep that mass aerated for the 2 to 3 months now during this process of manual turning of the piled up mass we will keep the aeration process in that mass due to this aeration process the aerobic bacteria will do the decomposition of the organic matter and all the organic matter will be decomposed after 4 to 4.5 months okay so after 2 to 3 months of manual turning what we will generally do we will left that piled up mass for the 1 to 1.5 months without any turning now after 1 to 1.5 months all the organic matter will decompose completely now what is the problem with this method why the municipal department will not use this method nowadays because during the turning of the piled up mass all the waste will spread into that area and it will cause pollution in that area that's why indoor method of composting is outdated nowadays okay now in indoor method of composting uses manual turning of piled up mass that is refuse plus night soil for its decomposition under aerobic condition we had discussed it now in this method refuse and night soil are alternatively piled in depth of about 7.5 cm to 10 cm each to a total depth of 1.5 m in a trench or above the ground to form a mound called windrow in land filling we called the small unit as cell here the small unit is known as windrow now the composting waste is aerated by periodically turning the waste mix for 2 to 3 months we had already discussed it that initial phase we need to turn the waste mix for 2 to 3 months okay now this compost mass is then left for another 1 to 1.5 months without any turning thus entire process takes 4 months for the complete decomposition of the organic matter that is the indoor method of composting now the next method of composting is the bangalore method of composting now in bangalore method of composting we will make the windrow as one layer of refuse another layer of night soil one layer of refuse another layer of night soil one layer of refuse and another layer of night soil similar to the indoor method of composting but the difference is that in indoor method the process is aerobic but in bangalore method the process is completely anaerobic now what how this anaerobic condition will arise here just listen to me okay now when the complete area is filled by the refuse and night soil we will provide the, at the top the soil layer or the earth layer of thickness 15 cm to 20 cm now this soil layer will restrict the entry of air from the atmosphere to the refuse or night soil due to which anaerobic condition will arise into that piled up mass and due to this anaerobic bacteria all the organic matter will decompose due to anaerobic bacteria and the whole process will take around 4 to 4.5 months okay now this method involves anaerobic decomposition of waste and does not involve any turning or handling of the mass hence it is clearer than the indoor method that's why all the municipal department nowadays used bangalore method of composting this method is therefore widely adopted by the municipal authorities throughout india the refuse and night soil in this method are therefore piled up in layers in an underground trench this mass is covered at its top by a layer of earth about 15 cm depth and is finally left over for the decomposition within 2 to 3 days of process intensive biological action starts taking place and organic matter begins to be destroyed now due to this decomposition considerable heats get evolved in the process which raises the temperature of the decomposing mass to about 75 degrees celsius now this high temperature will indicate that the decomposition is started and slowly and slowly the temperature will decrease and the whole process or the decomposition process is completely done slowly and slowly now this heat prevents the breeding of flies by destroying their larva about after about 4 to 5 months 
द रिफ्यूज गेट्स स्टेबलाइज एंड चेंजेस इन टू अ ब्राउन कलर्ड ओडर लेस पाउडरी मास कॉल्ड एस ह्यूमस सो ऑल द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू ह्यूमस विच विल कंटेन्स वन परसेंट नाइट्रोजन वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट फॉस्फोरस वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट पोटेशियम एंड इज पैथोजन फ्री एंड दस प्रोड्यूसिंग वैल्यूबल न्यूट्रिय फॉर द सॉइल that is all about the composting method we had discussed the fundamental definition as well as the method of disposal of solid waste management okay that is all about this topic thank you very much students